All right, welcome Joel to our Friday class. And we are looking, first of all, at the big idea of chapter 12. And the big idea is, see if you can fill in the blank. So this is chapter 12, the big idea. You can kind of keep an eye on your notes so you know what to put in here. Is the want, the want, the one I want. It's actually the goal of all of statistics. So we covered it probably the first day of class. So what was the what's our goal of statistics? Do you remember that word? Break your brain. Or is it faded? Fade your brain. Alright, give me a letter. Breathe. L. No L. Well. Okay, nothing about something. <laughs> oh no. Now you know what it is? It's the word inference. Oh, yep. Right, inference. Inference okay. about something. So we're doing oh, inference. <laughs> so that's our whole goal of statistics to infer things about a big population from samples. So in this chapter, we, we are doing inference not about mu. Not about P, but what are we doing in principle? Right? We kick it up to a coffee line. Regression line. We don't call it B, we call it beta. 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 Right. beta. All right. Beta. So I kind of left you hanging and asked you to go where you've never gone before. Yeah. So I heard there's been limited success. So let's I was hanging. Up. Let's pick it up there. All right. So what they did is they took these paper uh, paper helicopters. Is this the right one? Yeah. yeah. And they dropped them from different heights. So they randomly chose which height each paper helicopter would be dropped. They never dropped the same helicopter twice, so they cut out a whole bunch of helicopters. It never said that it was random. Yeah, it doesn't say random. Yeah, it didn't say random. Yeah. I checked it. I just checked it off. I kind of yeah, cut it off. off. I just okay. gave you the bare bones. Let's say that, that it was, if we had the whole story, we would definitely know that they chose them randomly. So good eye, though. Good eye. All right, good eye, so Kevin. please, that leads us to liner. So let's go down the list. I just heard you discuss random, so we're going to take that. All right. And luckily, with this example, they gave us all these charts, so we didn't have to put data in. So we are looking, what chart, could you hold up your paper and point to the chart that has something to do with L? So can you find that? All right, Maddie, what you got there? Uh, all right, this chart. What, what kind of chart is that? Residual. Well, that's not what no. we care about for linear. That's not. So I'll come back to you, though. So hold that thought, <laughs> Maddie. All right, Matt, uh, Morgan, what are you pointing to? I'm pointing to the uh, flight time seconds and the drop height. All right, so you actually look at the data, and the reason they have, this one's a little odd, yeah, in that they dropped how many from each height? It looks like about 10 or so yeah. from each height. So you're going to have some data stacked on top of each other, so it's not normal data, but they... They drew a line. You can see that the stacks are at least going in a linear pattern. Do you agree? Yes. All right. So Morgan, the one she was pointing to, the one I'm pointing to, that's where that you go for L. Huh? What is that it's just the these, um, right. what do you call it? A plot? Not a dot plot, because that's just, that that's something mm. else. The data plot? A graph. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> a graph. <laughs> Independent and um, variable, uh -huh. and the dependent variable, the response variable, and the explanatory variable. But it does have a name. I guess we have. We'll call it the graph of the data. <laughs> All right. So I independent. So talk to me about the I part, Ryan. What do you think of this one? Um, uh, I what well, I did. Um, ten n is less than big n. I think. Oh, this was one, that not what I was it wasn't to do? a true sample. We just did an experiment. So when there's no sample drawn, we're, we took 70 helicopters and dropped them all at random heights. It was an experiment. So Ron, you recall how that works a little differently for um, I? If if one thing doesn't affect the right. other thing. And the, 
to make sure that didn't happen. They didn't drop the same paper helicopter more than once. So, because if you drop it once, it might affect the second drop. So they were very diligent to indicate that. So one drop doesn't affect the next. I'm sure they were without the same one twice that they dropped just like into like a fire. Remember Spider-Man? All right, so Kevin, read about the helicopter experiment, and we're going down line. All right, and so what point to the graph that helped you decide about N? Point to the graph that helps you decide about N. All right, okay, so hold that up, Dan, so you can see what he used. And what is your conclusion? Uh, it is normal. And what is that a picture of? A histogram. Of? The residual Residuals. Frequency. So that's what I wanted to make sure. Where else could you have gone after your training yesterday? There's another picture there. You could have gone to the, up? the residual z-score one, right? All right. So can you point to that? Hold yeah. it up and point to it? That right. one. And what do we want that to be? Linear. All right. Among so them. this one looks like like this. And then the normal, what? The normal probability yeah. chart has to be straight. Normal probability chart. And they, you'll see that right here, it has to be a straight line. It had a little dips in it, but nothing major. So that if that's straight, or that is uh, normal looking, then we are happy. So either way you went would be good on that one. So wasn't it nice we didn't have to find the data ourselves? E, can you remind me what E stands for? Haley, what's the E stand for? Equal variance. Equal variance. E stands for ya woo Point to the chart that will help with equal variance. Which one? Three? Which one are you point to? The one in the top corner. Uh, we're on the next page. Okay. So on the next page, hopefully you noticed it over there. So it's right here she pointed. And what were we looking for about that, Bree? Um, we're looking for there to be like an equal amount of dots above the line as below the line. All right. How's this one? Line? It looks pretty good. It's pretty good. All right. Some of the stacks are a little off. But overall, residuals, and we want the same above as below. And it was pretty close, except for maybe that last stack. All right, and random we already covered. So we're ready to actually do the test. Here's where I dropped you off yesterday with this little tidbit of information. And I just kind of relied on your gut and your past experience to get the rest. We're looking for a confidence interval, and I don't know if it's stated on here, but we are going to do 95%, so that would have been helpful to know. I think it's All right, so it's 95% confidence in, oh, no. in, uh, interval the, the, the that we're doesn't looking tell for. You to do anything. And we're going to use these numbers, and we are going to grab them from the mini tab. And luckily, I don't think I've seen a problem. <clears throat> There might be one, like I think the next Wait, one. Wait, how would we? Not many. No, they gave us a mini tab. So, oh no, right here, the, the one below did it. Oh yeah, it did. So, we're always getting mini tabs. So, I, I kind of blew one up so you can almost see it from everywhere in the room. So, first of all, we need B. And you have been taught back in chapter three how to use this mini tab to find B. Anyone, Maddie, take a stab at what number you think is on the mini tab that would represent the slope. You have been taught, but it's been a while. Does it look familiar to you? I have no idea. Really? I like a whack at it. I don't think Remember, we used to, that's how we got A and B previously from mini tabs. So. Okay. All right. Haley? Is it the um, 0 0.0057? Right. It's the, it is under the coefficient column, oh, okay. but no, it's not constant. Because remember, y hat equals A plus B x. So we're looking for A and B. A is going to be the constant. 
and B is going to be whatever else they call it. <laughs> what do they call it? Drop height. All right. Drop so top. so A would have been negative point oh three seven. Right. So let's actually yeah. Um, yeah. So let's just grab B. That's all we need. So Kaylee, read that value for me. Point oh oh five seven two four four. All right. Point oh, oh, so five, five, one, seven, 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 two, two four, 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 four
So it's that long decimal. So let me get that on the board. So that one will always be on the mini tab, you said? Yeah. Nice. Pretty boring, huh? Yeah, that's boring. Yeah, I like that. <laughs> <laughs> so when I put all that in, let's not take like the time to look at it. Just I got like out. No, I'm trying to make sure it's all in there. Oh. That started <laughs> at 0. 0.0053 basically and went to 0. 0.0061. I'm sure. No, no, it's a plus or minus equation. So you get like, Yeah, so you go through with the plus, you'll get the 0.0061. You go through with the minus, you'll get the 0. 0.0053. Alright. So all right. do we do alpha with so this where it's like. Let us interpret. All right. This is not alpha, this is a confidence interval. Oh, oh, so no. We are 95%. Go ahead, Andrew. We are 95% confident that the interval lies between those two, right? All right, what lies between these? The interval of uh, flight yeah, time. What are we looking for? Uh, I don't know. There's no question. It's just data. <laughs> the flight time. I don't know. Uh, the average flight time is between these two numbers. The average flight time is that right? No. What are we the average drop height. height. I don't know. Flight time versus drop height. No. Versus. No. What are we having inference about? Beta. What's beta? Mean. No, it's not a mean. What is it? Oh. We are 95% confident that beta lies between these two intervals. Yeah, what's beta? Uh, I don't know. Sorry. Think about that. We are 95% confident that the true what lies in that in parameter. The true what parameter? The true beta parameter. Well, what's beta stands for? <laughs> Is it like a statistic? Big Bravo. Extra. Is residual. Oh, 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 I don't know. Is it residual? <laughs> no. Is it slow? Slow. Oh, yeah, we did say that. Alright, so know what you're looking for. It helps to know when you found it. Alright, 0 0.053, 0 0.061, the true slope of that relationship. And we were relating drop height and. Pressing your quiz. No, we were relating. What were we relating on that graph? Uh, flight time and drop flight height. Flight time. Drop height and flight time. It has a, a linear relationship, and the slope of that is in here. Not very much of a slope, so it's pretty flat. Mr. Krabs is in there. So the right. true slope of flight time <laughs> versus, versus uh, drop height versus flight time. All right. Mr. Krabs is in there. Very good. <laughs> yeah. All right, now I want you to try well, the next slope. one. Let's see if you can try the next one for a few minutes. And if you're going in the right direction, I'll probably shut that down and teach you how to take a test. You know, significant test. All right. All right, so the next one, does fidgeting keep you slim? So Maddie, Maddie, could you read about that? In chapter three, we examined data from a study that investigated why some people don't gain weight even when they overeat. Perhaps fidgeting and other non-exercise activity, NEA, explains why. Some people may spontaneously increase non-exercise activity when fed more. Researchers okay. deliberately overfed a random sample of 16 healthy <laughs> <laughs> Wait, this is, what is that experiment called? Uh, it's not ethical. We talked about that. Yeah, yeah. It's not ethical. They're overfeeding people. <laughs> they measure fat gain in kilometers and change in energy use in calories from activity other than deliberate exercise. Fidgeting, daily living, and the like for each subject. Here are the data. What right. they do is they don't give them any information, they just keep cramming fig newtons down their <laughs> They don't like give them it to No, they just take a fidget spinner and they go, guys, right. guys, I'm losing weight. Now we are looking at this mini tab and we're going to try to come up with. I'm losing weight, you're just not gaining. So try that on spinner. your lonesome. Raise your hand if you have a question. Work quietly so others can think. Here's your starting point right here. Yes, ma'am. Whoa, don't we need to do a liner? Yeah, no. Say, we gotta do a liner? Check. Do we have enough check. info for liner? Can I just write checks? We have to put all the data in our Please, calculators. Please, I beg to God, can we not yeah. do that? Yeah. That's true. Um, <laughs> that would be good practice. I think we should do that because I don't think we need to practice All right, all right. So data, data in because of liner. Let me practice. So there are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16 pairs of data. Put the NEA change in L1 and the fat gain in L2. Notice there's two rows. No, I just don't want to I know. Do you want to do this? Okay. Then I want to cut. 
I don't know, like... I gotta clear, clear all my L1s. Put the fact yeah, you can do, you can do stat edit, uh, clear list, L1, comma, L2, comma, L3, comma, L4. You can leave L5, because it all has ones. Yes! But you will have to add some ones on L5, because we have 16, did I say? Data. 16 data Maddie, did you put them in already? I asked to put in Z. Are so we, L2. the second How? chart, is that getting... What, what, are, what are we putting in where? Ryan, they're all in order. Right now we're clearing them. Is it a 95%? You got it through them? Just like continue. Well, it says in here... Oh, okay, cool. Let's do 90% so we get different numbers, okay? <laughs> Let's do 90%. Ryan, Daniel asked you a question. What, what was it? 90% I said, do you know how to clear them? Yeah, I do. Okay. Instead of doing a 95%. Well, it's going to be different numbers anyways because our degrees of freedom is different. Regardless of our confidence. That's true. Okay, 90% just for fun. Just for kicks. Yeah. L I N E R. <laughs> Alright, so once you get the data in, you're going to go to stat plot and show me the data. Show me the money. See if I got it in. I can't remember if I put it in or not. Any change in L1. Right, show me the money. Right. Yep. Only, two, only two L's. Yeah. And then there's like, I can't remember what else. What was in L3 again? Alright, in L3, three. we're going to have to go grab somewhere our A and a B. So, one, two, three, four, I L3, I need A and B before I can tell you. Oh, I did it. So, to get A and B, you're going to go to stack cow. Oh, gotcha, right. Wait, can you go to the mini tab? This is all part of one. Can you go to the mini tab? Yeah, this is. Is there a one, two, three, two? Okay, I just put nine. Wait, wait. How many? Is L1 all of the oh, yeah. NEA change? Yes. Right. Oh, can so someone be two L's? Can That's someone, what I was saying. Do we really have, can yeah, someone, I mean, we have like, to look at the linear? Sorry, uh, so Wait, L1 is, is all of them? Yeah. L1 so is, is top row and then so the next Maddie, what's box, our top row. Our A is, um, hold on. Okay. Wait, how did you get that? 3.5051. No, it's not. Oh, yeah. it is. You're right. Okay, go ahead. Yep. And, and what's your B? Our B is. Point oh 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 seven. Is it negative? No, it's positive. I think it's negative. It's negative point oh oh three Ooh, four. No, four, you're right. Four, All right. So we'll is that the right number? Uh, yes. Okay. All right. So did anyone get the linear look at, at the data yet? Let me see if I got it. So you're going to go to stat plot. Once your data is in, turn it on. And so we multiply by L2 or something. L1. Okay, so then what are we putting in L2? For L3? The fat gain? For the, the, the All right, second so row. Alright, so you're going to do 3.5051 minus 0.003441 L1. Yes, L1. Yeah. Okay. And nothing for L4? Yeah, L4 is next. L4 is L2 minus L3, or is it yeah, the other way around? Yeah, I think that's what yes. it is. Nope. Nope. I want to see the, anyone got a graph of the data? It'll be X list L1, Y list L2. Okay, so then we go... I think wait. I got it. Wait, where's your L1 on <laughs> Okay, so what goes in L3? That doesn't look like the data. Okay, that looks like something. a probability distribution. Yeah, uh, uh, prob and how what goes in L3? Okay. First, you want the data. Yeah, this is the 3.5 times 1 minus. Wait, okay. okay. X list is what? Uh, uh, one and L2 and yeah. yeah. Yeah, wait. Is that? Alright, here's my graph of the data. Can anyone get it? Oh, yeah. It's a good plot. Yeah. Is this uh, you have your which, what is it? Is it which uh, graph is it? A dot plot? Can I see uh, first one. Is this okay, yeah. X list is hey. L1, Y list L2. Hey. Okay. Hey. Uh, got it. Alright, are we gonna say oh, linear? Miss Tau, can I see it again? There it's how linear. Like let's say it's like a point. <laughs> Hold it up so I see that. Yeah, maybe a point six. Yeah, mine looks like that. Point four. Is that in the screen? Yeah, I'll put this one up. Yep. Well, on your data uh, list, mine won't. Yeah. Uh, oh, mine doesn't work. No, I'm not independent. Oh, independent. What do we know about it? Oh, no. Quick, um, Same thing. Yeah. Same thing. 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 Is less than. Okay. What's that? What are we putting for X list and Y? Number of people. L1 and then L2. All right. So and then L what? I off 
and a one and a two. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Is yeah. normal. Can I get to the resistance? You just again. that one. Oh, the visuals. Yeah. You either use the his, this one or that. Right. We need the, the residuals. Oh, oh, remember how you go up to make the residuals? Go up to L3. L3. And I got these numbers from the mini tab. Wait, it's not this many tabs. So now, I don't see it. And that X list is with um, That is your norm. That's your. I think you do the same the thing when you put in L3 what, and L4. What, what did you put in for uh, the dots? You put in yeah, L1, so. L4. I just put in L3. L3 is the real. L3, L4, right? Oh, for, oh, for the residuals. It's only asking for one. Oh. Wait, what do we put in? I thought for residuals you put in L3, L4. So are you have you done this in L3? Yeah. All right, so L4 is L2 minus L3. So it's L3, so, L4. So when you do, yeah, when you graph for the residual, you do L3, L4? L1, if you're looking at There's it for only, this. It only asks for one list. Yeah. What? X list and frequency. X list and Y list. This is what I got for the Which residual. plot are we using? Well, I'm using right. Instagram, okay. right? Oh, that's right. That means that they are normal. Right. Why did it ask for a Y list? Am I putting I it using the wrong graph? My yeah, next for X list and use frequency. Is that just you guys? That's a mind yeah, master. Okay. So when you hit that, yeah, did you hit it? Yeah, the histogram only gives you one option. L list and frequency, or X list and frequency. Yeah. yeah. And then I just All right. All right. So the difference between that and what they were getting is they were actually just graphing the residuals. Yeah, because I didn't even need to put in L5. Right. Yeah, I got an error. If you're graphing the residuals, just to see like a histogram, that's where you would need L1, L4. Oh wait, frequency is L5. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Uh, but it still so doesn't. So what do you that's put in to graph the residuals? L3 and L5. Scatter the residuals. Oh, uh, what's it asking for? for it's upgrade. asking for an X list and frequency. Yeah, frequency is L5. Yeah. It would be yeah, ones. But what is L4? L4? L4. Okay. Did you try L4? L4 is. Yeah. We didn't have enough ones in our L4. Oh. Yeah, right. that'll say Which graph? Oh. Yeah, we need to put ones for your frequency. Yeah, yeah, hold on, which graph is the residual graph? Residual is, uh... Yeah, you have to add in L5, you put in one. So unless you're clear, then you should be there. Sure, Mr. Reed, how well? The X graph and the Y graph. Wait, so what is the difference between that and this? Oh, well, we're not doing that. I just used to see the same number. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. What? Now it's another error. There's a did you get error stats? I got error mismatched dim. Yeah, after that. After I didn't get error. What happened? Your ones are mismatched. Uh, take one of your ones in the first column and switch it with one. Um, okay, wait, Shannon, can I? Look, we got a straight line now. Shannon. Oh. So you have your X list as L. Your yeah. It passes the end test. Yeah, they're always good. Good and then you just go to zoom, uh, zoom, okay, and zoom stat. Go to zoom, zoom, Mazda. Oh, Wait, I hold on. What, what's your X list if it's, if it's not L1? L3. I don't know. I you don't know what you got? What'd you get, Matt? It's not working. This. Alright. Okay, so. Four. When you can look at Maggie, so see if you can figure out. One, two, three, four. How many fingers? Right, you have two choices. For normal, you can look at a histogram. If you did, you should be telling it L4 and frequency 1. And then you have to mess with the graph, like the X, the X spacing, or the X scale, and so forth. Uh, or you could go to the probability plot, which is the last one on your stat plot, and see if they're straight. I prefer that, but you can do what you want. On that one, you have to tell it in my room. L Come on, Maya. You have to go through my own. You're going to need to know. With nope. your brother. <laughs> Alright, let's see what this question is. Right, right now, I'm going to throw one of what is your name. I got it. What was it? I calculated the same thing, so I just went directly to Zoom stack. I got a water graph. I don't know. What? Alright. What happened to you? He got a water graph. Let me see. 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 Let me
Okay. You watch the graph and it's just like drawing the water. I don't know how to find that's that. That's a hyperbole. Okay, so you go back to the first <laughs> graph that you use. Hyperbole, that's a oh, hyperbole. And then you put no, in graph. No, parabola. Parabola. L3 in the top. Hyperbole is the wizard. It's like a graph. That's an exaggeration. Yeah, yeah. It's like this is like the heaviest thing I've ever heard. That one. We're gonna look for a residual plot, and that means we're gonna go out of you the six what I choices. Meant, though, we're gonna go to the top. Yeah, I know. So I actually like my first time. It's a hyperbola too. Like I played it for a round. If Maddie didn't laugh, I might have just been like, okay. You're gonna use the first one for the. My joke was if I had real water to get out of the water fountain. We're gonna look for equal variance now. Use this plot, and what does it ask for? Uh, it would be L1, L4, am I right? L3 and L4. L3, but the residuals are in L4. Yes. So yeah, you have to tell L4, L1, L4. L1? Okay. I got a water problem. No, no, because here, okay, that makes sense. Never mind, not L3 and L4, L1. L1. We'll try it. L1 is each of the body weights. We want the residual for each body weight. L1, L4. So, Brian, let me see yours on an equal variance. Okay, fingers is a way I can't get it to come up. It, I don't think I'm doing I, I keep going here, and then it's the histogram, right? No, we're doing now. We're doing okay. the next one. So it's the it's, residual it's, plot. It's, uh, okay. This it one. Like the so Wait, it's gonna Maggie, be the first you one. The background on that one. I need to get my plan. Oh, wait, I already know. I'm going to take those staples and I'm going to be like, no, it's going in my head. All right, that's it. It's just not a very good picture of it. So, do zoom stat. Beautiful. What is that? It's too late. All right, here's what we're getting. You have to go right to zoom stat. Does it look like enough above and below? No. No, we're going to draft. This is what I got. Yeah, I got the same thing as him. Andrew, I got a starfish. 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 Andrew, I Random. You probably can add. Yeah, yes. <laughs> hey. I actually. All right. Now we can make the confidence like, interval. Yeah, like All right. The preconditions take longer than the actual. Is it random? Did we say? Yeah. Okay. We're saying they chose them randomly. I think it even said that. We're not even just assuming it. All right. So the equation, the simple little equation, is B. Plus or minus T star S E of B. So there we go. So Did it give us the uh percent? The, uh, so what are we put in for B, Andrew? B you are going to put in uh negative point zero zero three four four one five. Alright, you got that from the chart? yeah, NEA change coefficient. All right, hopefully you see why he chose that out of all the numbers on the mini tab, why he chose that one. It is the slope. Plus or minus, I asked you to do 90%. Okay. How many is our degrees of freedom? Minus two. Uh, 14. What? 14, right. So 14 might be on our chart. 14. Yeah. 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 Right, so 14. 1.761. Yep. Oh, 1.761. Find me down if you don't know where that came from. Mini tab again. Where do we find the mm -hmm. SE of B? Somebody share that number with us. What do you think, Dan? Oh. SE of B? Uh, it's in, the test and it's either 0.3036 <laughs> or. No, anything on that row has to do with the constant. <laughs> and anything on the next row has to do with the slope. Like a key and so we're looking for the standard deviation, the standard error of the slope. So it's the number below the one you just said, which is? Is it? It's with S? Is? Yeah, it's with S. Yeah. Oh, the number below the one I just said. Yeah. So it's point oh 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 seven four one four. Right. That's it. All right. So I keep thinking to get out my calculator. Put that in and see what kind of. Interesting interval we got, and make a statement telling me. Do we get some negatives on this one? Wait, I want to show you one. Cool. Like what? Like, they're all negative. 
Joel, look what happened to my calculator. Which makes sense, because you remember the data originally had a negative slope. Working. And since this is inference about slope, we're expecting negative. If you get this. All right, did your calculation come up to be something like mine? Yep. All right. So would you interpret that? Try it, Bree. We are. Three. We are 90% confident. Yeah, 90. 90. <laughs> Stop. 90, not 95. Go ahead. We are 90% confident that the, um, oh, 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 that the true slope Yay. of the NEA change uh -huh. is between point zero, negative point zero zero four seven four seven and negative point zero zero two one three six. Right. Easy, 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 easy. Okay. Let me teach you how to do a test. We'll do a test looking at the crying infants. All right. <laughs> what? <laughs> yeah. Can we, like, make something that we take a second to write down all of those, like, calculator steps yeah. for liner, for liner, yeah. because yeah. I, it's confusing yeah. to me. Yeah. Okay. And all the different L's, which are yeah. all the different. It's almost like better to just understand it. Well, yeah, it's kind yeah. of Dang, the guy on the, the guy on the, um, it's hard to I'll memorize. check out the guy on the phone. Okay. Oh, what from that one? 752. And I let my calculator help me because it'll ask for certain things. Yeah, we're in the computer lab where some of my, my uh, pre calc students have taken a test. So. I thought we'd check there, but I checked again and oh it was God. there. That's like yeah. what newcomer right. thinks that we are. Would you read about <laughs> crying infants, Dan? Crying in IQ. Did you cry, cry a lot? Crying you. When you were little? You know those. That's cool. <laughs> <laughs> Infants who cry easily may be more easily stimulated than others. This may be a sign of a higher IQ. Child development researchers explored the relationship between crying infants 4 to 10 days old and their later IQ test scores. A snap of a rubber band on the sole foot caused oh my infants gosh. to cry. Hey, wasp. This is hey, not wasp. ethical. Hey, They're wasping. They're wasping these babies. <laughs> <laughs> the researchers recorded the crying and measured its intensity by the number of peaks in the most... <laughs> by the number of peaks in the most active 20 seconds. They later measure the child's IQ at age 3 years using the Stanford Binet IQ test. The table below shows the data from the random sample of 38 infants. All right. Okay, which they one's the pineapple? They gave us all the charts, so we don't have to put it <laughs> the in babies, our calculator. IQ. All right, liner. Oh, they test yeah, it they when they're test 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 three. Test when Jagger uh, gets here, he's <laughs> wasp them. What's two plus two? Can um, you here. allow me to skip that in that? Yes. I'm going to give you the All the, all the charts yes. are there, Everyone and you this. can do liner yourself later. It does pass. Let me give you the, now we're going to do a test. So we're going to conduct a significance. Significance. Yeah, look at that. So we need to test something. So we need H sub O and H sub A. So from the data, I see a, a lot of scatter, but a little bit of a flow, a little bit of a flow linearly, but not much. So if you had not seen that data line, that regression line, would you have said that there was a linear plot? No. So if it is, it's pretty low on the R scale. But we're going to go ahead and test and see if there is a linear relationship or not. So like there's the not? Test How bad do all these researchers do? H sub O. We're just going to have before our H sub O's were either, before our H sub O's were either mu or P, and then we went to chi squared. But now we are at not B, but beta. beta. Our null hypothesis. I believe for every case that we will see is always the same. Oh, yay! It simplifies things, doesn't it? So, <laughs> if I wanted to say, what would the slope of this line look like if there was no linear relationship between crying and IQ? What would the slope look like if there was no relationship? A big slope. 
been having to try to answer that before I tell you. What would the slope of this line look like if there was no relationship between crying and IQ? Scatter. The slope. What would the slope look like? Oh, zero. Straight line. What's a straight line? A straight line, yeah. Right. So we're going to have a flat line. And if there's no relationship, you would have a slope like this, which meant no matter how much they cried, their IQ was the same. So that just showed no relationship. So how do we reflect <laughs> that over here? We say beta the slope is, zero. is zero. 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 Very good. All right. Now, in this, on this study, do you think the researchers are hoping that there is a relationship? Or do you think that they're hoping for this? Or are they hoping for that? They are. So they're going to, for their case, we're going to say that they're looking for a positive linear relationship between the two. And that is a little bit subjective to Science what you fair. want it to be. So you could be less than. All right. All right, here you need to know how to do the test statistic. It I watched is, babies. I stole, I mean, it's a I found T test. And you're going to take, well, let me just remember what's floating around in your head, if we can remember. What was the Z test and what was the T test for X for P hat? Do you remember what we did? We did oh, well. Can they tell the parents of the babies they like? Uh, anyone remember? Uh, and I might not remember. <laughs> Yeah. 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 What? <laughs> Do you recall? Enoch. Oh. 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 All right. Divided by. Enoch. Do you like a peanut? Enoch. Yeah. 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 Over. 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 All right, down here for T when we were looking for the, the, the statistics for the beans. Mu. We had we didn't know mu. Oh. Uh, uh, X bar. X bar. Over. Yeah. Mu not, which was norm normally these were zero, I believe, because we said there was yeah. no difference. So yeah. that's what we were doing too. Square root of X bar. Square root of mu. It uh, was SMX, All right, so that's what we used to do. We do a test for one sample. Can anyone take a stab at what we're going to, having seen what we did with confidence intervals, say you're stuck on the AP test and you can't begin to remember. You can, you remember these two, but you can't remember the test for the slope because we only spent like two days your, on it. So therefore, can you kind of glean from here what it's going to look like here? Uh, it's going to have an X bar. Or no X bar. No, it's a beta. 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 You got a bay or not? <laughs> you got a bay? It's always zero. So. You got a bay or not? Not. All right, what am I going to put in the like, Okay, um, like, uh, <laughs> Look what we did for the confidence Ooh, is it the Y, Y hat, is Why? it the AX uh, plus B thing? Is it Look what we did for confidence You standard error. This is really everything for this example. <laughs> Brian, step up and look at the mini tab and find for me. Here I have it, all enlarged for you. What? No. So, what number on this mini tab points me to the slope of our sample? Um, uh, the number is 1.4929. All right, he's right. All right, and so B naught is what 
we have up here. If there is a value, we would use it, but we it's, uh, it's going to be zero for slope. So, and uh, Brian, which number is S E of B? Set as base. Um. Oh, 0 0.4870. No. Right. This number right here, 4870. Oh. And go ahead and calculate that. I wrote I got it. 3. I got a 3.07. That's not what I got there. All right, how many degrees of freedom? Um, we'll say alpha is 0.05. I don't see anything different. So we need to go our chart is 38 yeah, 36. 36. Value. Pardon? 36. Hey, DF is 36. 36. Yeah. Does that mean we did zero 36? No. 30. You got around 30. 30. What is our conf? So, <coughs> so confidence. Right, but you need a uh, oh, 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 what two numbers is it between? Oh, it's between uh, uh, 0. 0. 0. 0. 0. 0. 0. 0.0025 and 0. 0.001. Point what? 0. 0.0025 and 0. 0.001. I'll put the 0. 0.001 first. 0. 0.0025. So that's our p-value range. So when we compare that to 0. 0.05, Shannon, will we reject or fail to reject? We fail to reject. Because oh wait. Yeah. Because this is smaller. And when this reject. tells me the probability of this happening is when this yeah. is true. It's good. And this is so small. It's we couldn't possibly it's happen by chance. So we when we say when yes to HA. I don't know if that's no. We fail. We reject. 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 Houseman, what are the words? Houseman, houseman, goes Houseman, then reject H of O and say there is enough evidence to say H of A is true. Right, 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 right. Very good.